Hello, my name is Dan, and I'm an evangelist living in the West African country of Sierra Leone. Uh, with my family, we moved here a couple years ago in order to preach the gospel. And we're right in the beginning of really the full brunt of the rainy season. And there's some interesting aspects of all of that. Uh, one, we really like the rainy season because it gives us a little bit of a break from the heat that's obviously common in this part of the world. Another thing that happens during the rainy season is I often find more time on my hands here at home. Uh, that's because the rain will often hinder transportation uh, and you know, inevitably cancel some of the studies that I've scheduled throughout the week. And that means the rainy season is really a wonderful time for me to be able to evaluate myself, uh, kind of reflect uh, upon some things. And it's really from that place that I want to share some things on this video. Primarily, I want to be able to give you guys an update regarding my language learning and where I'm at with all of that. And so uh, before we do that, let's roll that intro. So Creo is the local language that is most commonly spoken in Sierra Leone, and that was obviously a priority that I made when I moved here to be able to learn this language. I'm thankful to God that I have uh, really adapted this language. Um, I consider myself bilingual in Creo. The way I would describe where I'm currently at is that I am effective, I think, in communicating in Creo but I'm not yet proficient. And to kind of illustrate what that means, at least how I think about it, I grew up in like construction and contracting work. It's what my dad did, and so that's just something I grew up in. I kind of feel like when it comes to my Creo, that I'm kind of like a handyman um, in contrast and comparison to a, like a professional contractor. Like if there is a, a repair or renovation or remodeling that needs done, the handyman, he can do the job, but it's gonna take him longer to do it. It won't look as nice at the end. And the handyman will always kind of feel kind of meh about the job that he did because he knows it's not like a professional. Like he knows enough about what he's doing to know, yeah, this is good enough. Yeah, you know, I didn't wanna pay for a contractor to do this. Um, it's not as great as what it would be if a professional did it, but I did the job. And that's kind of how I feel about my Creo. My Creo, it takes me longer than it should to be able to say things. Uh, I'm not able to say things as well. I'm constantly aware that I am not saying this in the most fluent and effective and like direct way in Creo, but I'm able to get the job done. Being in a, a handyman stage of, of my Creo, at first is not a very discouraging thing, but when you feel like you're in a prolonged residence of that phase and you're longing for an upgrade, you're longing for a promotion to that professional status, uh, it can be kind of a downer. And um, on this channel, I've really tried to share not only opinions and advice regarding overseas evangelism work, um, but also sharing kind of the ups and downs of our journey and the things that we've learned. And this one certainly falls into that category of being a more negative thing that I've observed and a kind of a negative experience and kind of sharing a frustrating or discouraging aspect of the work here and of my own experience here. And that is over these past, I think, eight months or so, it's hard to pinpoint exactly. I think I've really been in a state of frustration and discouragement and kind of a toxic attitude towards my Creo. And that, of course, predictably, has resulted in me sabotaging my growth in Creo because my attitude towards my growth in Creo is so negative which has then made me feel even worse. And so it's kind of like this negative snowball effect that I've, I've been going through. I would say that it's not been a constant perpetual state of negativity. However, if I am honest, I've been in that place more often than not. Uh, maybe I'll have a day or two of positive thinking, 
but then I'll revert back to some pretty toxic thoughts and just being negative about where I'm at. And so um, after evaluating myself on this area, I want to share with you guys some of the things that I think have been responsible for me having this kind of negative and toxic attitude, um, both for my own benefit of being able to share and being able to overcome this, but also maybe something that, that could be helpful to you all if you're ever in a situation be similar to where I am, to be able to look out for these things and protect yourself from these things and overcome these sort of things that unfortunately has resulted in me um, kind of developing, like I said, this, this negative attitude in this important area of learning. All right, the first thing I'll share here that I think has been a significant contributing factor to me just being negative regarding my Creo has been, uh, you know, what is called the thief of joy, which is comparison. Uh, comparing myself to other people that have a better grasp on the language than I, that are able to speak more fluently than I. Uh, and that's just something that uh, I've just given into way too much, where I've just been focused way too much on comparing myself to other people. Uh, I know the reality that all of us have our unique skills and strengths and things that we excel in that others don't. But when Creo and learning the language is such an important thing to me, it's really hard for me to be able to keep a positive attitude regarding my own progress when I see other people progressing so much faster than I am. So that's just one huge danger that I feel like I have given into on too many occasions and really allowed that to occupy too much of my mind. Another thing that I've identified as being, I think, a contributing factor to this is failed expectations. And this can come through a couple different forms. Uh, for me, it could come from the form of I had an expectation and an idea of where I would be a year and a half into my Sierra Leone residency. Uh, that I would be farther along than what I am and that I am not where I thought I would be. I failed my expectations that I had that were arbitrary and ill-informed and therefore that creates more discouragement and negativity because after all I'm not where I wanted to be at this point. Another thing is when I feel like I'm failing the expectations that other people have of me and this is probably less common but it still happened on several occasions where uh, some Sierra Leoneans have uh, expressed disappointment regarding where I'm at in my Creo. Um, now it doesn't happen all the time and usually when they're sharing that displeasure or sharing that judgmentalism it's not like they're giving me a grand appraisal of my Creo but just the fact that why did you say it like that? <laughs> um, you know you don't even know how to say that um, after being here this long and so those sorts of things I think again instead of viewing that with a kind of a roll off the sh your shoulders and kind of as a grain of salt, those things have kind of carried weight and been internalized um, too much within me and again contributed to that negativity. And then there's this general shame uh, that comes along with wanting to know something, wanting to do something and feeling unable to do it to the level that you want. Um, and so there have been a lot of negative self-talk, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, with myself, um, you know, me telling myself, uh, you know, you should know this already. And um, you've been here for this long and you don't know how to say this simple thing or, or there are times, you know, when a study doesn't go as well as I want it to and it's according to me because uh, I wasn't able to speak as clearly in Creo as I would have liked. Um, and so there's just a lot of shame and embarrassment and discouragement that is associated with a lack of progress that is determined by an arbitrary timeline that I've somehow failed to be able to meet. And so I think that also associates with that false expectation of uh, setting goals that are, are really um, not helpful and beneficial in the long run. All right, so what am I doing about all this? Uh, I'm taking a few different steps. Number one, I want to be really disciplined regarding my self-talk and my attitude. I really don't want to tolerate negativity towards Creo. So instead of dwelling upon those thoughts, thinking about them, uh, kind of rehashing that internally, I'm really going to expel those kind of negative feelings, negative talk, and just 
the amount of time, the amount of focus I'm giving towards thinking about Creo and my own Creo in that toxic way, I'm just gonna shut that down where that's just not as present in my mind. Another thing I'm doing is you know sharing some of my vulnerability in this area with uh, a, a good support system. Uh, so sharing this struggle that I have with uh, brethren, uh, with family, uh, being able to get their support and their help in this area is just going to be crucial and really helpful for me. I think also a reminder that God's Word does not require me to speak it in a professional level in order for it to have a powerful effect. I think God's Word is proven throughout the centuries to be effective even if it isn't spoken in the most smoothest, eloquent way. My purpose in coming here does not require me to speak in the most proficient way, um, but rather speaking in an effective way. And I've gotten to that point now. I know that I can communicate the truths of God's Word and the Gospel in Creo with my current grasp of the language. So I need to be content with that for now. Uh, obviously, I want to continue to grow to get better and more effective in that. But I think reminding myself of that truth, that God's Word is powerful, I think would help me uh, not drift into that kind of negative mindset and mentality. And the last one really is that I need to be aware and remind myself that God's grace is sufficient for my weaknesses, for my challenges, for my thorns in the flesh, even if they're just temporary ones. Perhaps like Paul, my slowness of learning the language to the level that I would want uh, could just be a thorn in the flesh that is given to me as a protector against pride. And so I need to rem remind myself that Perhaps my you know, deficiency in one area can highlight God's power and God's might, and that's not something that should be received with frustration on my part, but rather gratitude and thanksgiving. And so um, these are some things, among others, I'm trying to rem remind myself of. I'm trying to be very disciplined in my mentality and my thoughts regarding all of this. If you all have any suggestions or any um, you know, kind words or any corrections or any, anything at all you think would be helpful for me, uh, certainly I'd benefit from them. And perhaps other people watching this video with a similar struggle would enjoy reading them as well. Uh, thank you so much for listening to some of this. This is just an update. I hope uh, in maybe another year from now or less to be able to share significant progress in this area. Obviously progress in my Creo, but maybe more importantly, progress in my mentality and my attitude uh, towards this aspect of my life and my work here in Sierra Leone. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.